Good morning, New City. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and good to see you guys here. And for you that will probably be joining us online shortly, uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, let's worship together. take a moment and say hi to each other and then uh, Pastor Vince will come up.
Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Just one more minute and then we'll be getting going here. All right, guys, we are going to pull it back together, welcome some of the, uh, the other people who are just arriving, and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, we love you guys, um, welcome to New City if you're joining us online, um, and avoiding the, uh, the frigid Bay Air, uh, we, we are glad that you're joining us, it's, it's actually not that bad though, it's pretty nice out here, isn't it? Amen. Yep, we got one amen, I'm in the right spot. Um, yeah, the only brief announcement is uh, we'll be right here, same time, same place, next week, first uh, service of the year, and talking about where we feel like God is leading us as a church this uh, this next season. So uh, tune in or join us next Sunday, 10 a.m., and uh, and I'll be preaching, and I, I cannot wait um, for that service. But one thing that I cannot wait for more, and that's for what God is going to say to us right now, uh, we have a spe special guest speaker today right here from our very own church, someone we love and, and we trust. And uh, uh, he's preached to us earlier this year via video, but he's going to come to us live right now. And that's uh, the only person I get to call this. I love it. The Reverend Dr. Uh, Stephen Yip. And so um, I can't wait to hear what God's going to say through him. I want to say a prayer right before he comes over him. And then we are just going to... Um, hang back and hear whatever God's going to say. And I want to pray that you have open hearts and open minds to, to what God is going to do here uh, and that we will all he leave here a little more in love with Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this crazy season that has been the year 2020. Um, and the fact that none of it caught you off guard and that you are Lord over it all and that we get to stand here in your grace, reminded that you are sovereign and that you're good that you're leading and guiding us 
And uh, I pray right now as we start to look forward into this next year and whatever you might bring, that you would give us hearts that are willing to follow you, hearts of anticipation for what you're going to lead us into and where you're going to guide us as your people, and uh, hearts that are humble, hearts that are unified, hearts that are um, more in love with you than ever. So speak to us, give us, give us ears to hear what you would say to us right now, Holy Spirit. And bless Stephen, give him a clear mind and, and boldness to just proclaim the gospel to us because we need it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Let's welcome Stephen with a big old hand clap, yeah? Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. It is an honor and a privilege to be up here uh, talking to you guys about Jesus. Um, that opening prayer was just about the exact same thing that I was going to pray for. So I appreciate that. Um, so today is the last Sunday of 2020. What a year it has been. Saying that it's been challenging is definitely an understatement. On the lighter side of the year, this was the year of remote working, of essential workers, of remote learning, homeschooling for folks that never thought they'd be homeschooling, social distancing, toilet paper shortages at Costco, online shopping, online browsing, online everything, forgetting what it's like to wear anything other than comfortable house clothes, Zoom parties, Zoom family gatherings, Zoom get-togethers with friends. It's been a year that hopefully we'll never have to experience again. On the heavier side, COVID-19 has brought death. It's brought illness. It's collapsed the economy. It's left a lot of people in unemployment. A lot of people feel more isolated now than ever before. The social unrest that we've experienced this year due to politics and race have caused division between Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter, Republicans and Democrats, those that think lightly of COVID and those who take it very seriously. And this division runs through families, it runs through friends, it runs through gospel communities, and unfortunately it runs through our church. Church with the big C. So not just here at New City, but the global church body. Because of these things, some people who have had faith have fallen away from it. And those who hold on to faith wonder what the point of all of this is. Some are praying for Jesus to come back sooner than later. But on the other side of that, there are some people who for the first time are starting to see that there's more to this life than the day to day. And they're beginning to search for meaning and truth in life and explore for the first time things that they never thought about before. Regardless, though, of where you are in that spectrum, the majority of us, myself included, have experienced depression, anxiety, hopelessness, and even despair. When I was invited to preach today, God made it very clear to me that he has a message of encouragement for all of us. Believers, non-believers alike, he wants us to know that there is hope and that that hope can bring us unity in this time of division and this time of despair and anxiety and depression. Today we're going to be going through two passages in the book of Ephesians. If you would like to follow along with me, then you can turn or click to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For those who are searching for Ephesians, it's almost at the end of the Bible. While you're getting there, I'll give a little background information about the city of Ephesus. So Ephesus is a city that's in present day Turkey. Uh, when the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to Ephesus, it was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. It was a harbor town situated where a major river meets the Mediterranean Sea it was a major metropolitan trade center with a population that was very diverse of around 250,000 people, which was pretty big for that time. It was a place that drew people from all over the known world, 
people of different religious beliefs, different cultural backgrounds, different languages and tongues and different customs. And the church at Ephesus, it was as diverse as the city was. It brought Jewish and non-Jewish people together. And in this scripture, the word Gentiles, it's a word that's used to identify the population of people who were non-Jewish. So we're gonna read Ephesians chapter two, starting in verse eight. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are all our God's worksmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision that done in the body by the hands that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens and God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So why do we need to attempt to move towards unity? Simply put, it's what God came to earth to accomplish and what he commands his, of his people. Jesus came to bridge the gap and break down the dividing walls between God and his creation, as well as God, uh, sorry, as well as, and correct the relationships between uh, what people had with one another. He did so by living the perfect and blameless and obedient life that we could never do. And he died the death that we deserve on a cross. And when he was raised from the dead, and we too, when we put our faith in Christ, are raised from the dead and brought to life just like him. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we become a new creation, are admitted as members to his household as a part of his holy temple. So back in verse number, oops, wrong way. <laughs> verse number 19. He said, consequently, you're no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. As members of a house, we have all the same rights and privileges as the son does. Because of Jesus's death, we are now seen and got by God as his sons. We are children of the father, the creator of the most high. And as that, we are heirs to all that that comes with his spirit, that is at work in us, making us more like him each day. And a little bit further, it says that we're built on this foundation that was by the apostles and prophets with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So when we think about building something, the foundation and the cornerstone are of utter importance, right? So the foundation has to be level. The cornerstone has to be perfect 90 degree angle. And in this, Paul writes, and reminds us of the fact that the foundation was laid 
for all of us to be God's holy temple, which is what he calls us to be. Jesus being our cornerstone puts the confidence in us in knowing that this temple that's being built isn't by the hands of man, but by the hands of God. You see, when we try to build something on our own, if the cornerstone is off or the foundation is off, the whole building is going to be off. But we can have confidence in knowing that even in the messiness of who we are, it is God's work that is making his temple perfect. It is God's work who unifies. It's something that even if we try our hardest to, we're going to fail at time and time again. It requires us to trust in him and the work of his spirit to truly become his temple. And it's only that that can do it. We can't do it on our own. So we praise him for that because that is such a freeing thing to be able to walk in that knowledge and that faith. It relieves us of that pressure of thinking that it's on us and it glorifies the creator. When we are in a place of faith in Jesus, we become a new creation. We're admitted as members of his household and we become a part of his holy temple. People from all over the world and all different periods in history, every shade of skin from every culture, language, whether they're rich or poor, have a lot or none, we're all joined together by Jesus to make up this new holy temple where God's spirit resides corporately and where God's spirit resides individually. One of the most beautiful things about the church is unity and diversity, especially even more so in the midst of differing viewpoints and politics. Because just as Jesus broke down the wall between Jews and Gentiles by abolishing the law with his flesh, right now his spirit fights to break down the walls that separate his people and put to death the hostility that exists between them. He fights to reconcile his people back to one another. Now let's look back at verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. All of us are saved by grace, through faith. Even though we come from different places and have differing opinions, we're all in desperate need of God's forgiveness because we all make mistakes and fall short of his standards. This is why we just celebrated Christmas. The coming of our Savior to the world is the greatest gift that all of humanity will ever get. When we come to the cross, we all come to the cross as equals. All of us on our knees as sinners with nothing to show God that we are worthy of salvation and his love and his forgiveness. And when we get up from our knees to live together, we can do so as equals because of this. No one part of the household, no one part of the body is more important or valuable than any other. As a doctor, it's impossible for me not to talk about a body. I learned a lot about it. And every day I'm learning more and more about the church body. And as I've grown in my faith, I've come to realize that this body that we call our church is one that is gifted by the spirit that all of us play an integral role and part in it and when the body works together it can do much more than when the body is separated and that's another reason why it's so important for us to fight for unity as the temple of god and as his body we are here to reflect him and to be his ambassadors to the world and we can do a much better job of that together and a much more powerful job of that together than separate. So as each body part is connected to the other and each body part plays its role and does the function that it was created to do, God is glorified, his temple is created, and the world is able to see the light that Jesus came to bring to it. which kind of leads us to verse 10. For we are God's worksmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We're all created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. Right now, all of us have a fire and a calling to do the works that God has set before us. It's that thing inside of you that you want and desire to fulfill, but just don't know how. It's like an itch that you just can't satisfy when we are searching for that calling and thinking that our work is it, or thinking that we have to do more for our neighbor or for the less fortunate, that's a part of it. But the real calling for all of us is to trust in God fully. The real calling for all of us is to live faithfully, to worship him always, and to see God for who he is the beautiful and glorious one who created all things for him and that lives in us. His spirit is doing the work for us. And when we do that, when we live in that calling, his spirit does the work on our behalf and his behalf. And we get to sit back and be completely fulfilled and satisfied. So he plans to use each of us as his instrument of peace and joy and love. And at this exact moment in our lives, in this exact place, in the last Sunday of 2020 going into 2021, he has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us to bring his love and joy and peace through the power of his spirit to those around us. And as I said before, this work is better done as a unified family than as separate members. A body that is dismembered doesn't function as well as a body that's fully put together. So what do we need to do to be unified? We're gonna turn now to Ephesians chapter four. And we're gonna start in verse one. As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Tim Keller wrote something, and I didn't write it down, so I'm probably going to butcher this. But humility disappears as, as soon as we start talking ab about how humble we may be. Right? One of my favorite jokes in, is uh, telling people I'm the most humble person that I know, which obviously I'm not. <laughs> but it's impossible for us to be completely humble and gentle to be patient, bearing with one another in love, to make every effort to keep unity and peace because all of us are fallen and all of us are sinners. It's not something that we can do out of our own power. It's not something that we can just work really, really hard at and get better and better at and get stronger. Unfortunately, it's not like bodybuilding where we can go to the gym and exercise and get stronger and stronger at humility and stronger and stronger at patience and stronger and stronger at gentleness. Those are all things that the Bible says are fruits of the spirit. And those fruits of the spirit only come from God. So how then, how then do we become more humble and gentle and patient, being able to bear with one another in love? How do we keep unity and peace? We can't, none of us can do it. But fortunately, there is one who has. Jesus, the son of God, who sat at the right hand of the father for all of eternity, from the beginning of time, he humbled himself to come as a baby, born in a manger, poor, cold, no place to call home, 
he lived a life of subtlety and grew up and then when he grew up and he started his ministry he said that he was he was a homeless wanderer who went around and was rejected in many places that he went to and that's God the father who sent his son who was humble and gentle and patient and he bared with us in love so much so that he bared the cross for us in love and it's him who has done this work for us when we put our faith and trust in him his holy spirit resides in us and it transforms us and does this work for us when we look at verses four through six The wind blew my page. <laughs> there is only one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all. There is one word that is repeated several times in this passage, and that is one. We are called to remind ourselves and each other that we are one. We are one in spirit. We are one in the body because we believe in one Lord and one faith and one God and Father who is over all and in all. He does the work and he unifies us and he makes us more like him. So what can we do today? What is the takeaway of how we can move from this place of divisiveness and hopelessness and despair in this season it's been really easy for all of us including myself to turn to things other than God for comfort and identity and with social distancing we've lost our connection and accountability with the communities that we're a part of I am guilty of these things Since we need to be walking with Jesus and in rhythm with the Holy Spirit, our hearts have to desire him more than anything. And we have to believe and trust that he is all that we need. In Christ, we become holy and in Christ, we grow in holiness. The first step is to, to take is to turn away from things that can never fulfill us and turn back towards God and towards his people. To grow in the fruits of the spirit and to effectively fight for unity and to have hope for the future, we don't have to be better people and try harder. No, the beauty and mystery of the gospel is that our faith transforms us into new creations. When we see and worship God for who he is, the creator of the universe, of all of heaven and earth, who loved us enough to send and sacrifice his son to bring us back into right relationship with him and each other. When we remember that God is real and alive and that we actually have access to him right now, then we're gonna to desire to commune with him through his word, through talking to him, through prayer, and to just be with him. We become more like him through the power of his Holy Spirit in this way. There's a reminder here, though, that's really important to remember. As Tim Keller put it, it's not the strength of your faith, but the object of your faith that saves you. Jesus was completely humble and gentle. He was patient. He bared the cross for us in love. He unified us and made us one family and his holy temple. And he's continuing to do that work for us on our behalf in us right now. When we embrace the love of Christ, we will also embrace the way of life that Christ loved. So I hope that these words were words that encourage you to remember the goodness of God and his faithfulness, to remember that he fights for unity, he fights for love, he fights for peace, 
and he's done that battle and had the victory already. He's the one who gives us the strength to love others when it's hard, and, to, and he's the one who gives us wisdom when conversations are gonna be tough, when we have to face things that are hard to face, he will be faithful to his promises, his promise to be with us, to love us, to live in us and to never leave us or forsake us. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he is a fighter for unity, one who came to die to bring us into right relationship with God the Father and with all of his creation and with each other. Lord, we pray right now that you would set our hearts into motion to fight for unity as well. Unity not to be right or wrong, but unity to glorify you and to show the world that your gospel truth is far greater than any differences that we can have with other people. Lord, in this time where so many of us have felt despair and hopelessness and depressed and anxious, Lord, I pray that you would speak to people right now, that you would melt hearts, that you would bring people's faith back to life where it was missing or gone, or if for the first time people are hearing this and have been moved to put their faith and trust in you, God, I pray that you would do that work now in the power of your spirit. Lord, move us to repent and turn back towards you as first steps towards unity, towards unification, and towards hope. Lord, help us to praise you and worship you and see you for who you are, our great creator, our savior, our provider, our protector, and the one who loves us so much that you sent your son down for us. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We praise you and we worship you. In Jesus' name. Thanks, Stephen. It's awesome. <laughs> right? Seriously. Um, as Stephen was sharing, I had a you know I had my worship songs prepared, but um, there, I, as he was sharing, I was like, oh, I got to share this song that I wrote when I was maybe 22 years old, which was quite a few years ago, um, and. Uh, so I'm going to share that instead. Uh, there was a moment about seven years ago that Tom Fine actually had shared um, to our GC, um, me and Kenny Lyles and a few other people uh, lived in this house called The Crate, which I'm, maybe some of you have heard these stories, but um, there was about it's Heidi and I and, and three single guys all lived in this, this large house and we had, we had, our, we had our group and, and um, we tried to throw in a lot of events and... I had read books on how to do things missionally and things like that. So I was kind of convicting myself for all the things that I was trying to do and just couldn't quite succeed at. And um, I remember Tom sharing with us, you know, that uh, one of the things that you guys are doing is being really hard on yourselves, but what you guys have that's most precious is you guys. And to invite people into just what you guys already are doing and already like the rhythms and what you guys already are. As, as just people who are come together as, as believers. And so um, I'll never forget that. Thanks, Tom, for sharing that to us. It just, I don't know if you remember that. It's about seven years ago now, so <laughs> it's been a while, but I, I never forgot that. And um, I have the song called Soldier, and it is about that same thing where it's like, you know, they will know you by the love you have for each other. And so that is such a, it's weird to think, but that's one of our strongest things that we have is each other and the love that we have for each other. And uh, so this song is called Soldier. And I wrote it when I was 22 years old. And it's about being um, soldiers in Christ and uh, being there for each other. Why do we shoot our wounded when we 
see somebody down why must we always prejudge him when his face is on the ground and why can we take the time to see what's really going on there's an evil i'm not lying we need to keep each other strong cause i'm a soldier and you're a soldier let's pick each other up when we fall and if you're crying feel like dying let's pick each other up when we fall Like a knight in shining armor, we train for battle, fighting wrong, but on our own, we just can't do it, we were meant to fight alone, and when will we take the time to see what's really going on, there's an evil, I'm not lying, we need to keep each other strong, cause I'm a soldier. You're a soldier Let's pick each other up when we fall And if you're crying Feel like dying Let's pick each other up when we fall This world can be too much Sometimes I need a, a friend is a helping hand This battle not against each other It's about love, sisters and brothers Cause I'm a soldier And you're a soldier Let's pick each other up when we fall And if you're crying, feel like dying Let's pick each other up when we fall Let's pick each other up when we fall So I love hospitality. I love creating spaces. And I think I sometimes find myself loving that more than creating a space for God and his spirit, you know? That if we are his temple, we have each and every day, we have this new opportunity to kind of like set the table for him and have coffee with him. You know, those moments of just taking in the air that we're breathing and, and do that with him. And so um, as we sing this next song, I, I I invite you guys to invite him. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone By your presence, Lord Spirit and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, 
that is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord by your presence Lord there's nothing worth more that could ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope Yes, He is Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit And Holy Spirit You are welcome here Come flood this and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence, Lord Your presence Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience what the glory of your good. Yes, he's good. Let us become more aware. Your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Stephen, for that word, man. That was a word uh, the soil of my heart was sorely in need of. It's been a year, hasn't it? 2020 has been a year of stuff I've never seen in my life, man. I've, I know this country's been divided before. I know our world's been divided before, but it's never felt like it has this past year in my life. There's been fear, there's been all kinds of things, and we've needed comfort, and we've needed encouragement, and this world right now needs to see what unity can look like. And there is not a better place for them to look than the Church of God. There's never been a movement of people that's been more diverse historically, geographically, culturally, politically, than the Church of Jesus Christ. And all the governments of the world that were around 2,000 years ago have come and gone, and the church is still here. In 2,000 years from now, if God hasn't come back already, the church is still going to be here. Amen? That's a good word, Stephen. And, and I just want to encourage us not to just take that and say, man, that was a good word. Now what am I eating for lunch? But to chew on that over lunch a little bit, to, 
as you gather with family and friends to think about what does it look for us in a world that may be more divided than one we've ever seen? And is it getting increasingly so? I mean, when you're on social media and the algorithms are literally tailoring content for you and connecting you with people who think like you and avoiding content that doesn't challenge your worldview and avoiding people that don't, don't think like you, you know, when that's the daily reality of your online experience, which we're getting more and more of than ever before as we're at home, it's causing us to, to drift apart. But the thing that unifies us is exactly what Dr. Stephen was saying, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the one who came and his body was broken so that he could unify us as his body here in this world. That's the gospel. And the Holy Spirit that Trevor's just singing about is that one spirit that Stephen was preaching about in Ephesians 4 that we've been given one spirit. The same Holy Spirit that's in you is in me, is in our brothers and sisters across the world as they're gathering in the name of Jesus today. There is hope for unity. There is hope for this world. And it's right here in the church. And I love, one thing I love about our church is how diverse we are and yet how unified we are. But it doesn't just happen naturally. It takes us renewing the gospel in our heart, listening to the Holy Spirit, being convicted again of our own viewpoints and, and not bringing anything to the center more so than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, I'm going to just preach a whole other sermon because I'm so inspired right now. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. So instead, I will leave you with a benediction, a good word hear from uh, the same author of Ephesians, Paul, at the end of the book of Romans, he says this, may the God of endurance, how many know we need some endurance? May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. That's not something we can conjure up, it's not something we can make happen, but it is something that the Holy Spirit can make happen in us, amen? So as you go forward this week, as you go forward toward this new year, may you go forward with a deeper knowledge of the gospel, of the one who loved you and gave himself for you. And may you go forward more full of his spirit, praying for a baptism of the spirit, praying to be filled. And with all the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit that come with that, including unity in one body. We're all baptized by one body and one spirit, amen. And may God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Or if you gather in your communities this week, uh, gather in the name of Jesus find ways to be unified, find ways to love one another. If you see somebody around here you don't know very well, you haven't seen in a while, greet them, love them, check in on them. And uh, for those of you joining in online, we love you very much and uh, we miss you and uh, we'll be out here. See you guys. God bless you.